One time Srila Prabhupada, he used to travel, of course Prabhupada circled the world uh, 12 times and he visited so many countries, some of them numerous times, visited many temples, initiated many devotees, so he had an eye for seeing at our level of Krishna consciousness. There's the beginning stage, there's the intermediate stage, and there's the advanced stage of Krishna consciousness. So, but Prabhupada was very kind. He would um, come into the temples to inspire us. And one time I heard him say, I think it was in Rome, we were in Rome for having Harinam Sankatan for many months advertising Prabhupada's visit. And uh, he did a program in a special hall there. He was very pleased, pleased with the enthusiasm of the devotees to chant, to dance, and to take prasadam, which are our basic functions. So the next morning after the big program that we had, Prabhupada said that he, when he comes to a temple, he can see the level of advancement by two things. How eager the devotees are to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. And how nice the Tulsi plant is growing. And I heard, I didn't figure it out at first. We were young devotees, but I could relate to how eager devotees are to accept the Yuga Dharma. Yuga Dharma means the particular process that Krishna introduces in any of the four ages. We'll be discussing that more this evening. But he said, if devotees are enthusiastic in chanting Hare Krishna, he knows everything's okay. And then he said, if the Tulsi plant is uh, flourishing, I didn't catch it at first, but as the years went by, I come to understand that Tulsi Devi is a, um, a devotee of Krishna in the spiritual world, and she very kindly comes to this world as a so-called plant to accept our loving devotion. So if we show devotion to her by watering her, praying to her, circumambulating her, taking nice care of her as a devotee, if she's uh, happy with our devotion, she flourishes like this. So in the Rome temple, we had huge Tulsi plants, very beautiful Tulsi plants, and the Manjaris, the Tulsi Manjaris were growing very nicely. So when Prabhupada walked into the place where we had Tulsi, he saw she was flourishing. He said, everything here is very nice. They like to chant Hare Krishna, and they serve Bhakti Devi, or uh, Tulsi Maharani, with much devotion. So all the Italian devotees, they were in ecstasy. And from there, um, Prabhupada came to Paris. And in Paris, we had also a, a room, big room, half the size, with many, many Tulsi plants. And we were also very proud of our plants. I noticed they were a little bit different color than the Tulsi plants in Rome, Italy, that devotees had grown. But when Prabhupada came in, he looked at our Tulsi plants and he frowned. He went, you know, we've been serving those plants for years. And we were thinking, in Italy, Prabhupada really loved the devotion we displayed to Tulsi Maharani. He made a comment. So he's going to say something very nice also when he sees our Tulsi plants. So <laughs> Prabhupada walked in. He frowned. He said, this is not Tulsi. <laughs> this is a cousin of Tulsi. You know, plants have varied varieties and so forth. This wasn't an actual Tulsi plant. It was a basil plant, but it wasn't Tulsi. So he said, this is not Tulsi. So I remember the head Pujari, who was, you know, growing the Tulsi plants for so many years, she started crying. But Prabhupada, I've been serving her, or it, she said. <laughs> I've been serving it for many, many years, and it's not Tulsi. So Prabhupada said, come here, and he patted her on the head. He said, it's okay, Krishna knows your intention. And he's told Tulsi that you've been serving her very nicely, so don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> but please get some real Tulsi plants. <laughs> so, do you have Tulsi here? Not yet, that's okay. In the beginning we didn't have either. My god sister, uh, Govinda Dasi, she's the first one who picked up on the importance of the Tulsi plant by going to India and seeing in almost every Hindu home, just outside, they had the, sh the Tulsi Shtamba. You may, those of you who are Indian, you'll know the Tulsi Shtamba. 
in the villages especially, so much part of our Vedic culture to develop our devotion by worshiping Krishna's devotee. Krishna says, one who says is my, he's my devotee, he's not my devotee. But one who says he's a devotee of my devotee, he's my devotee. So by worshiping Tulsi, we please Krishna very much. So Govinda Dasi, my dear god sister, she was the first one to start cultivating the Tulsi plant. Prabhupada appreciated so much that act of bhakti, that act of devotion, that act of love, which is the essence of the Krishna conscious movement. We're all here to love and to be loved by transcendental personalities who give us their, their blessings, who give us their mercy. Tulsi Devi is so important. And equally as important to develop our bhakti, our devotion, is this chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. So one may think, I have no devotion for, for Krishna. This is my first time at the temple. I don't have any devotion. What, uh, do I belong here? Yes. That devotion, that love for God, that love for Radha and Krishna, Radha and Krishna, the divine couple, it's already in your heart. Like you're George Harrison, because you're all British. <laughs> I can't say. I'm from America. We split from you guys about 300 years ago. <laughs> we created the United States of America. <laughs> but, Prabhupada, but Prabhupada said that, um, he said about George, well, George Harrison said, after his associating with Prabhupada on many occasions, he said, everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some know it and some don't. That's a bold statement. You go on the street and say, you're a Krishna Bhakta. <laughs> but Ultimately, it's true because Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he's the seed-giving father of all living entities. Just like the father plants the seed of life into the womb of his wife and she gives birth to a son or a daughter by that act of placing the seed into the womb of the mother. So Krishna said he's the seed-giving father of all living entities. He's the seed-giving father. It means he's the source of life for every created being. So we're all, you could say, children of God. We all have the same father. So if you have the same father, what are you? Brothers and sisters? I'm sure you have a brother or sister. Why, why are they brother? Why are they sister? Because you have the same father. So we're all devotees of Krishna. And having once been with Krishna, of course, there's different philosophies, but Prabhupada said back home, back to Godhead, meaning back to our original home. We all have that love for our Divine Father. But Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagavan Ji, Guru Krishna Prashad, Bhai Bhakti Lad Bij, as Kaviraj Goswami says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that since we fell from grace, since we fell into the material world, many, many, many millions and billions of lives ago. What is our business? Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagavan Jeev. We have been forced by our desires to travel from one Brahmanda. Brahmanda means universe. To travel from one universe to the next. And more specifically, Krishna consciousness is science, very detailed science. Not only from one universe to another have we been traveling, searching for material pleasure, but from one species of life to the next. If you think about that. From one species of life to the next, and what's more, from one body to the next. We've been wandering. Brahmanda Bhamati Konya Bhagavanji, Guru Krishna Prashad Bhai Bhaktlat Bij. It means at some point the Lord comes as avatar, avatar means one, not the movie, but avatar means one who descends from the spiritual world into the material world to enlighten the conditioned souls as to who they actually are. Krishna comes, yes, it's just stated in Bhagavad Gita, once in a day of Brahma, Krishna comes again and again, and he's knocking on the door. Hello, 
hello, wake up, hello. But we may not open the door. But in his absence, he sends this representative for the same purpose. Just like one time Prabhupada told one of my godbrothers in a moment of intimacy, that Krishna asked me to come to this material world to preach Krishna consciousness. But in humility, Prabhupada told Krishna that I'm not very inclined towards austerity. I don't think I'll make it down there. It's very humbly said like that. So the Krishna said to Prabhupada, as Prabhupada said, Krishna said, no, you just go down to the material world, you write books on the science of Krishna consciousness, and I'll arrange everything else for you. And so it came to pass. Prabhupada appeared, his whole life was a, a, a life in preparation for that particular moment when he was close to my age, a little younger, in his 70s. He sailed the Jaladuta alone to America with a carton of books and about 27 uh, dollars of rupees in his pocket. He told us I was successful, why, in America? Because I had faith in two things, the chanting of Hare Krishna and the instructions of my spiritual master. He was successful. He told us that upon approaching America, he was, from the people working on the ship, the Jaladuta, he was hearing about American people, how they live, how Westerners live. And Papa was thinking, oh, when I arrive in America, and I ask them, because it's necessary, if one's going to take up spiritual life, there has to be some principle of renunciation. You have to let go. You can only um, get something valuable if you give something up. So Prabhupada said, when I get to the shores of America and I tell them, no meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, and no gambling, they'll say to me, okay, old man, you take your message and go back to India. <laughs> he was thinking like that, or thinking maybe that would happen. But it didn't happen because this movement is the desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most recent incarnation. And if God desires something, who can stop him? Isn't it? He's the supreme controller. If he desires something, who can stop him? So what did Mahaprabhu say? My message, this Krishna conscious message, of, which the essence of is to chant Hare Krishna so simply, that's it. he said this will go to every town and village. And he was including Crawley as well. Yes, this is a village, a town, maybe it's a city, I don't know, on my second time here. But rest assured, you're within the plan of the Lord, and you're the first pioneers in this particular place to, to take it up in earnest. And we should understand that all the people out there, all the animals, all the fish, all the birds, all the insects, all the germs, they're all brothers and sisters because we have the same father. So George Harrison said, everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some know it and some don't. So now the responsibility falls upon us. Mahaprabhu came. Prabhupada came. And they've gone back to enjoy their transcendental relationships in Sri Vrindavan Dham as gopis and cowherd boys and cows and kapavikshya trees, a world where Every step is a dance, every word is a song, there's a festival every day. They've gone back to their nitya siddha, their, their, their eternal pastimes as liberated souls, and they've left us with the responsibility of learning Jivera Supoya Krishnera Nitya Das. Who am I? I'm not British, I'm not American, I'm not Canadian, German, I'm not a man, a woman, black, white, yellow. I'm Krishna's eternal servant, and I'm trapped in this nasty material world. So we have to liberate ourselves, then we have to liberate others. We have to really want to be liberated from this material world. You can't hold on to something and expect to get pure devotion, pure bhakti. No, we have to want. And that eagerness is called lodium. I really want to get out of here. I really do. You realize that. Through thick and thin, you come to this understanding I'm a, I'm a stranger in a strange land. I have to get out of here. 
then you can take Krishna consciousness up in earnest. Like Prabhupada told one of my godmothers, uh, Satsvarup Maharaj, when he gave him his danda, sannyas, he said, never look back and think you've left anything valuable behind and never envy the position of the materialistic sense enjoyers. So turn your back on material existence, back home, back to Godhead. So that, that desire has to be there. Like Rupa Goswami prays in his Padyavali. Rupa Goswami is our Rasa Chari. He's written so many books enlightening us about who we really are. And when you hear about that, yeah, that's what I want. I don't want this birth, disease, old age, and death. I want that liberated state, free from all that stress, that anxiety, that suffering. I want that. And he expressed it in his Padyavali. His Padyavali is a collection of uh, verses that he was, uh, that he liked. Just like every devotee, as you advance in Krishna consciousness, you have certain shlokas that you like to quote, isn't it? Prabhupada told us in London one time at Sevenbury Place, I came there, Prabhupada said in the lecture, that if you memorize a verse and you use it seven times in your classes, it's yours. If you memorize a verse seven times, or you memorize a verse and you quote it seven times, keep it. It's yours. That's when I started learning shlokas. That's what I want for Christmas. <laughs> Whatever gift, you know, we think my birthday, Christmas, I'm going to get something. What do I want? Not, not something that's here today and gone tomorrow, but something I can keep forever, which enlightens me about the temporary nature of this world and the positive alternative of Krishna consciousness. So I also have a little shloka book. My servant here, Kartamas Shai, he, he keeps his verse in his brain. He's a young boy, he's smart, he's intelligent. One of his fortes is that he can call up a verse from he read a few months ago, usually about something very deep in Krishna consciousness. And sometimes when I'm speaking, especially in my old age, your memory fades a little bit, he'll fill in and give me the verse in the middle of the lecture. But I keep a book. One of my favorite verses about being eager to go home. To go home, to go, home is where your heart is. As we advance in Krishna consciousness, we realize that my heart's with Krishna. My home's Vrindavan. My friends are Bajabasis. Not this London and Crawley and all these, you know, New York, etc. When Prabhupada arrived here, you know as well as I do. On one occasion when Prabhupada arrived in London, the newspaper reporter, in a very, you know, uh, positive way, he said, Swami, how do you like London? And Prabhupada said, London is hell. <laughs> <laughs> and the man said, shall I print that? Yes. But we can turn Lon London into heaven, Shvarga, or better, Goloka, by spreading this chanting all over this wonderful country. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Prabhupada made a joke, he said, they used to say the sun never set on the British Empire. He said, now it never rises. <laughs> because the British Empire just means <laughs> practically UK now, more or less. So when one gets that realization through um, Guru Shastra and Sadhu, through associating with like-minded devotees, you learn many things, by um, hearing from the spiritual master, which is our main connection with our guru, it's just this exchange of knowledge. Guru's giving knowledge, 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 knowledge. That's our relationship with our guru, so we should hear from our gurus as often as possible and hear from our founder, Acharya, <coughs> Sridhar Prabhupada, as often as possible. <coughs> and by <coughs> Krishna's mercy, we begin to make advancement. Then. The first step in the science of self-realization is this realization that uh, this is a nasty place. Narottam Das Thakur says, 
Here I am in the middle of a holocaust trying to enjoy myself. Hello. And then you pray for mercy because we can't make it out alone. We make it out in association of devotees like this. We make it out by the mercy of the blessings of our guru. We make it out by the mercy of Krishna Kripa, by the mercy of the Lord. So then Rupa Goswami says, such a devotee, he's young, he's a beginner, but that's okay. If you're drowning in the ocean and somebody picks you up just one inch above the water, that's a big thing. You may not be on land, back at home, you know, sitting in your home watching TV, watching the Championship League. Champion League's final. <laughs> All of London was empty yesterday. <laughs> Watching Manchester disunited. United. United. Manchester, Manchester uh, City. And the whole thing, big, big show, and there's only one goal. <laughs> he told me. <laughs> He's a young boy. <laughs> when you, first step is to realize the futility of material existence. Of course, to continue, we have these bodies our family, we have our country, we have the environment, these things we have to be responsible for, but what's the Panam Gatim? Out! Get out of here! So, a beautiful prayer by Rupa Goswami. My dear Lord, I'm drowning in the fathomless whirlpool of material existence. It's a good word, fathomless. It's, it, fathomless means it's so deep you, don't, you can't measure the depth. I'm drowning in this fathomless whirlpool of material existence. O oh, you who give shelter to the shelterless. Hmm? You who give shelter to the shelterless. Please, just this one time, extend your hand to save me. One of my favorite verses. This is a verse for beginners. Oh, Krishna, I'm drowning in this fathomless whirlpool of material existence. O oh, you who give shelter to those who have no shelter, please, won't you just one this, this one time extend your hand to save me? So what does that mean? Krishna, you know, as Purusha Shukti, has so many arms. He just, with one arm, he, you know, you see it's like a science fiction movie. The arm comes in and picks you up. No. The extension of mercy is Sri Guru the Lord's representative. He's the representative, like every country has an ambassador, and the ambassador represents the country. And if you please the ambassador, that country he represents is happy with you. And if you offend the ambassador, you offend the country. So we see Krishna's representatives like that. Our Srila Prabhupada is Krishna's representative, and we see him in that light. So that person is the, is the extension, you could say, of the arm of Krishna. And we serve him, and he takes our service, he gives it to his guru, who gives it to his guru, who gives it to his guru, who gives it to his guru, and finally it gets to Krishna, and Krishna says, whose service is this? Bhakti Jain, she just came to the temple and she offered you a flower uh, on, the, on the altar, like that. Prabhupada said, Srimati Radharani is the embodiment of Krishna's mercy. She's the tender-hearted, soft-natured uh, personality of the Lord, his Ladini Shakti, his pleasure potency, Srimati Radharani. And Prabhupada said, when Radharani sees a new candidate, a candidate just off the street, off, off, off this, out of the park at Soho Street, I saw the park yesterday, oh my God going on there. You can't say it in a lecture. When Radharani sees a candidate, a candidate for devotional service, rendering something, you know, to the Vaishnavas or to the spiritual master, to Krishna, Radharani whispers in Krishna's ear, here's a nice candidate for you for devotional service. Please accept her service. Vrindavaneshwari Srimati Radharani Ki. And you see how popular she is. Krishna can be strong like a thunderbolt. The hardest lessons are the one best learned. He may send us some struggle and 
we have to call out Krishna, as we say in Russian, Pamagi, help me. And because the cry is sincere, Krishna helps. Or he can be soft like a rose. You can get his mercy just by eating up to your neck. What? Yes, Prabhupada said that impersonalists, they, you know, no, no, no uh, um, rich food. No, just, I, I just take some quinoa. <laughs> but Prabhupada said, we will eat samosas and go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> so this is Krishna's, uh, his special mercy, his prasad, because I've seen him through all my years, 52 years on the road. Not everyone listens like this to our philosophy. Not everyone may be attracted to the chanting of Hare Krishna. But who will not take some nice food stuff? Therefore, our restaurants are a secret weapon. People come because the prasadam is, it's very, very tasty, and they make progress. So this movement is for everyone because everyone is a devotee of Krishna. And something must attract them because Krishna is all attractive. That's the definition of God. He's all attractive. So there's something for everyone in the Krishna conscious movement. Just, they just have to come in contact with us. Therefore, I was saying in an interview yesterday, you have to keep going on Harinam in London. This is the Kirtan capital of the world. You can say it anywhere. Hindu Dunamar said, our London is the Kirtan capital of the world because there's so many people from all over the world in one place on, on Oxford Street. It's so amazing. I don't think I even saw one British person yesterday. And you have the opportunity to, to give Krishna his most attractive form, chanting, dancing, and feasting, and give some philosophy, because that's the foundation of a movement. This is not something sentimental. It's, it's very blissful, but it's not sentimental. It's based on a profound tattva philosophy given by Mahaprabhu, six Goswamis, Vishwanath, Baladev, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktishadhana Saraswati Thakur, presented in such an easy way to understand by Sridhar Prabhupada, something for everyone. Even if a person is not interested, they still get blessings. One time we were on Harinam in Paris, La Gay Paris, and we were in, in front of one big, huge popular department store. It was called uh, La Galerie Lafayette. C'est très bon, c'est un... It, it's very big, it's very grand, La Galerie Lafayette. There were thousands of people going by every day. And we were young men, you know, 19, 20, full of strength and vigor and enthusiasm. We just had Murdunga and Co uh, we had Murdunga and Cartels. No sound system in those days. No trumpets, no harmoniums. Just Murdunga and Cartels and our, our loud voices. Matajis were dancing very beautifully and we were singing and dancing and one French lady, La Haute Couture, she was you know, nicely dressed and diamond earrings and Rolex watch and beautiful dress. She came in front of the kirtan party and she stood in front of me like with this young lady is and she put her fingers in her ears. <laughs> so she couldn't, you know, she knew that would make us mad, you know. She put her fingers like this then she closed her eyes and she stuck her tongue out. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I closed my eyes and I can do like that. I can stick my tongue out. Okay. <laughs> she stood like that. Beautiful, aristocratic woman. And people are going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a little tough to start the Sankatan movement in the pioneer days. She must have stayed like that for half an hour. And I'm chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. So then, finally she walked away. So at that time, Sridhar Prabhupada was uh, staying at, at our temple in Paris. It was uh, La Quatre Rulissures in the, um, I forget what ironous, but near, near, the, uh, near the Arc de Triomphe, very special place. And um, Prabhupada was staying, so he, 
we, we got back from Sankirtan and Prabhupada called for me because I was the Sankirtan leader. He said, uh, bring Indra Dumna here. So I came into Prabhupada's room. He said, sit down. So, Indra Dumna, how was the Harinam today? And as a young devotee, I just thought it'd be <laughs> straightforward. I should have just said, Prabhupada, it was really blissful. But I said, I don't know, Prabhupada. We had a really unfortunate incident. He said, oh, what? I said, Prabhupada, this very aristocratic lady, she came in front of our kirtan party, and she put her fingers in her ears so she couldn't uh, hear the maha mantra. She closed her eyes, and she took her tongue out. <laughs> Prabhupada said, watch out. She stuck her tongue out. Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> no. I said, yes. He said, what did you do? What, yes, what did you do? He said it three times. What did you do? Um, I, 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 I didn't do anything. He said, you should have walked up to her, pulled her fingers out of her ears, <laughs> and very loudly in her right ear chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. He said, so? What? Do that next time. <laughs> you know, you, you want to embrace the instructions of your spiritual master. Many times my disciples say, Gurudev, just can you give me an instruction, a personal instruction? Like Prabhupada gave me a personal instruction one time. I was on my way to, well, to France, actually. We, we came here to London on the same flight. Prabhupada had wanted some men to, to come to Europe. This was 1970, 71, before many of you were born, actually. And Prabhupada wanted um, devotees to, to preach in Europe. I'd only been a devotee six months. So I volunteered. Temple president said, what's your qualification? I said, last summer I traveled around Europe and I know it really good. <laughs> All right, you can go. So we got on the plane in... Um, in New York City. Actually, I, I was chosen as one of a few devotees to go. So I, I heard Prabhupada was um, on his way to, to Europe as well. He'd been traveling around the United States of America. So I called up the, I found out what flight he was on and I called up the, um, the airlines. It was Pan Am Air in those days. And I said, um, can I get a seat on this particular uh, flight. And the lady said, young man, I'm sorry, uh, it's all booked. I said, no, my guru, my guru, he's going to Europe and he's given me a service to spread love of God all around Europe. She said, what? <laughs> you, that's, that's, that's the reason I should try to get you on the plane? I said, he's my guru. She said, What's a guru? You know, this is, this is the, this, the, the 70s. What's a guru? So I went on to this whole 20-minute explanation what a guru is, a spiritual. She said, I kind of touched her heart. She said, young man, let me try to help you. Give me a minute. So she went to see her supervisor. And the supervisor, no, 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 I could hear in the background. And the lady came back. She said, she said, uh, Young man, you're lucky. As I was talking to my supervisor, someone canceled. We've got a line of, you know, we've got 40 people waiting for the flight, but we decided to give you that, um, that seat so you can see your spiritual teacher. So I sometimes pray that that young lady gets some mercy because I got to travel with Prabhupada. And then when we got to the airport, I was checking in by myself, I just checked in and everyone's waiting for Prabhupada. And I say to the person behind the desk, um, what seat does A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada have? She said, we cannot reveal that information. I said, but he's my guru. <laughs> she said, what's a guru? <laughs> So 
So I said, you know, a whole, the people waiting, and I, she was so fascinated, you know, he's my teacher, he's taking responsibility for me to deliver me to, to God. She said, well, this is very quite interesting. She said, um, okay, don't tell anybody, he's sitting in seat 49A. I said, can you give me 49B, please? <laughs> <laughs> she said, don't tell anybody. I'm telling you now, but don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> I got the seat. So then the kirtan party arrives with Prabhupada. In the airports in those days, you, you could, you know, accompany someone right up to the desk, up to the gate, actually. This tumultuous kirtan. She said, what's that? I said, that's my guru. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we gave seva. We gave service to those two ladies. It's, it's a, Krishna consciousness is miraculous how Krishna's mercy unfolds, actually. So then Prabhupada came and Prabhupada saw me. He said, what is your name? I said, Indudumna, I'm accompanying you on the flight. He said, oh, so wait for me. So Prabhupada checked in and then he said, come. So we, we were actually some of the first to check in. So. We went to immigration, and then we went through security. And in security, Prabhupada carried this little white uh, bag, cute little bag, like a little t tiny suitcase, attache case, but it was pure white. And he had his passport in there, he had his personal car tolls in there, he had some dakshin uh, in there, he had a photo of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, I didn't know it at the time. I saw Prabhupada kept it very close. I said, can I carry it? He said, no. <laughs> okay. But when we got to security, the security officer said, sir, open that bag. I went, wow, well, I'm going to see. <laughs> <laughs> Tadiya means that is what is in connection to the guru or Krishna. And because it's fully used in Krishna's service, it's divine. Like you take... Uh, some cold steel, and you put it into a fire long enough, when you take it out, the steel is fire. So that which is material but used in the service of the divinity, it becomes spiritual. So all these things I understood Prabhupada was using fully in the service to his Guru Maharaj, so there was something divine, and nobody had the right to see inside. So I kind of stood, you know, at, at, at a... Uh, a little bit aside, so when Prabhupada opened it, I could see. So that the lock was uh, stuck. Prabhupada's fiddling with the lock. So the, uh, the security guard, he says, open it up. Open that up. So I leaned over and I said, sir, if you speak to my spiritual master like that one more time, I'm going to break your face. <laughs> I was strong, young man, you know. I had a good right punch. <laughs> if you speak like that one more time to my spiritual man, I'm going to break your face. So he went back, he said, I thought you Hare Krishnas were nonviolent. <laughs> I said, wait and see. <laughs> so he said, if he can open it, you open it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I turned to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, he went like this. All right. So it opened. I just and it flipped up like that. Oh my gosh, what a moment. It was like a vision into the spiritual worlds. So everything, yukta vairagya means renunciation in the sense that you don't uh, give it away, but you use it in Krishna's service. So there's some spectacles there, like dark, you know, probably with his black spectacles, you know, and there were his cartels, beautiful photo of his spiritual master, some Brahmin threads were there, a pen, so many things, so I'm, I'm pulling because I'm looking at it, <laughs> and the security guard says, you're not supposed to look at it, I'm supposed to look at it. <laughs> well, I said, oh yes, okay. <laughs> I turned around. So he looked at me, he said, you go. So Prabhupada kind of chuckled, you know, and we started walking towards the, the plane. We didn't, there, there wasn't that, that attaches to the door, we were actually walking to the plane. So we're walking together, and the, there was no one else because everything had been blocked. There were too many passengers. Just me and Prabhupada walking to the plane. And we go up the steps and we 
get our seats, you know, 49 A and B. Those are my favorite numbers <laughs> in numerology. People say, what's your favorite number? 49 B. <laughs> Sir, we don't have A or B. 49 B, Baba. <laughs> so we sat, and then we're getting ready to go, and um, people start to come on the plane. So Prabhupada turns to me and said, So, Indra is there a prasadam? And like, what? <laughs> is there a prasadam? I, I, and then I remembered one Madhaji had given me a bag of oranges. So I said, um, yes. He said, um, Kichoris? Because he was Chikori Muki as a young boy. He loved... I said, no, but there's some really nice fruit, Srila Prabhupada. Some, um, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you can offer him with love a fruit. And I said, it's a neophyte. You can offer him with fruit, a flower, a leaf, and he'll accept it. Yes. So, so I took out the, the, the bag, and I asked the lady for a knife. Because you, you know, you we were given knives in those days for your food. So I, I cut the oranges in half and quarters, put them on a plate, and I gave them to Sridhar Prabhupada. And the plane was taxiing and starting to go off, and as we went into the air, Prabhupada took the orange and he was uh, sucking on it. You know how you do with orange. And then he put it back on the plate. And he sucked all the orange. I think I gave him four or five oranges. He sucked the juice out of all of them. And then the plate was there, and he said, So, you will take prasadam? You know, I'd only been a devotee <laughs> not very long. So I said, um, no, Prabhupada, you ate all the prasadam. <laughs> so he said, no, now there is maha prasadam. And I went, whoa. Because I just heard it in a class, one of my godbrothers gave him a class about the ways in which we get mercy from the saint from the, the spiritual master. And he said, you can get the, the, the dust of the feet of a pure devotee. You can get the water that has washed his feet. And you can get the remnants of his food. Because the spiritual master is one way that he shows sense control is that he leaves some prasadam on the plate. He's demonstrating self-control. You know, usually, we're taught in Vedic culture to just eat everything on the plate. That's a good guest. It makes the host very happy. Mm, they liked everything. But the guru leaves some prasad. So here I was with all these <laughs> orange peels. So Baba said, it's ma prasada. So, you know, I was like, my mind was reeling. So I took the orange peels. I started to eat them. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever eaten orange peels. This is strange. My, my eyes were watering, and it wasn't prema, I promise. <laughs> and my lips were burning. But I didn't, I just, <laughs> and about halfway through, I looked at Prabhupada, he was like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Prabhupada, Mahaprasadam, not like that. <laughs> my lips were sore for two days. So I took them, and I put them in a little bag th there, and I, put them in my pocket, and then I, later on I dried them out. You can dry them, became very, very dry. Then I ground them up into small little pieces, almost like dust in the long run. And for a couple of years, every day before I'd go in Sankirtan, I'd take a little bit of that orange peel, and I became the biggest distributor of books in France for two years. <laughs> The thing is, <laughs> I didn't speak French. <laughs> I spoke a little French. Bonjour, monsieur, madame. Je suis un moine. I'm a monk. Je reviens de l'Inde. I've just come back from India. And nous avons un très bon livre. We have a nice book for you. Please give money. <laughs> that was my, my mantra. You know, nowadays, the book distributors, you know, this is yoga, you'll become healthy, your stress will go away, anxiety, um, eventually you'll lear learn what is divine, no, that, but because I was sincere, I wanted to give Prabhupada, 
who had given me so much, I wanted to give him to the people in the form of his books. Because he said, if you want to know me, read my books. So many times devotees lament, oh, I was not here when Prabhupada was here. You are. Vani, or the instruction of the spiritual master, is more important than the vapu, or the personal presence. Although personal presence is very nice, but we can have eternal association by uh, following the instructions of our spiritual master here, and when we serve him in the spiritual world, the relationship never finishes. There will be like, you know, uh, please give me the rose and I will give the rose to Radha, like that. It goes on. Mm -hmm. So then as we are flying, about three or four hours into the, into the, uh, the journey to London, um, the movie came on. The movie. So we don't watch movies, right? We don't know what is Netflix. <laughs> it's bad flicks. So the movie came on, and I took out, you know, we had this big Bhagavad Gita's nose. I took out this big Bhagavad Gita. I wanted to impress Prabhupada. I don't watch movies. So the movie came on. I took the book like this. Sarva Dharma Paricha Ja Mame Kam Sadharmam Braja Aham Tam Sava Pop. I was looking at Prabhupada. Moksha Simi Ma Suchaha. And Prabhupada started laughing. I looked at him. He was watching the movie. <laughs> so I put the book down and I watched the movie. It was a movie of Charlie Chaplin, a silent movie. Innocent. Prabhupada, when he was a young boy, he used to you know, watch these silent movies of, of Charlie and Chaplin. They're very funny. So then afterwards, I said to Prabhupada, um, I thought we weren't supposed to watch movies. And Prabhupada said it was Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, he said um, what were you seeing in the movie? And I didn't answer. Prabhupada said, Charlie Chaplin's... Um, Humor is original, and Krishna is the origin of all original things. So I was seeing Krishna. What were you seeing, Indradumna? <laughs> In other words, one should always see himself as a fool in front of the spiritual master. This is Lord Chaitanya from the mouth of Mahaprabhu, speaking about his spiritual master, Ishwara Puri. If I'm so intelligent, what am I doing here? You can be, have four PhDs, you can be this, that, and that, but where are you? Mrityalok. Mrityalok means the, 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 the world of death. For one who has taken his birth, death is certain. And for one who has died, birth is certain. So we all have our struggles, everyone has their story. Do you want to rewrite that story? Next birth, and next birth, and next birth, and next birth? No. So wise man, he questions, why am I suffering? And is there an alternative? There must be an alternative. This is not reality, birth, disease, old age, and death. This is not natural. What is natural is Krishna conscious. Everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some know it and some don't. We know it, but we have to vigyan. We have to realize it. We can't just say, I'm not this body. We have to realize I'm not this body. So when Material thoughts come to the mind as they do in the practice of yoga because of our past previous activities. Lust, anger, or greed may come to the mind. We just have to say no. There was this campaign in America many years ago because so many young people were taking drugs. So the government came out with a slogan to, you know, to help solve the problem that when a drug pusher comes to you as a young person offers you drugs, just say no. So we have to be like that. We take vows. Don't make promises you can't keep. When those desires come, no. Like if someone comes to your house, you don't entertain, unwanted guests, you don't entertain them. And they go away. You know, your mother-in-law comes. Of course, you have good mother-in-laws, but in the material world, there's a song about mother-in-laws. So she comes to spend the weekend with you. She says, what's for breakfast? We don't eat breakfast here. <laughs> okay, what's for lunch? 
no lunch. <laughs> Dinner, we're on a 40-day fast. <laughs> what does she do? Bye-bye. <laughs> so when these thoughts come, you don't entertain them and they have to go away. Ultimately, if you experience a higher pleasure, you can easily say no. You can only give up something if you get something better and what's best. Kali Kali Nam Rup Krishna Avatar. Krishna is present in the sound of his name. He's the reservoir of all pleasure. So after some time, you get that Nam Ruchi, that taste for the holy name, and your parents have to say, stop chanting, go to school. Now they say, you know, please can you chant one or two rounds <laughs> to, the, to the young teenage children? No, I'm, I'm not interested. But if they chant, then that Nam Ruchi will come and you can't stop them from chanting. That's the glories of the holy name. So, we got, to, um, we got to London, this is, you know, 1971. London looked different then, it was this hippie era, this, you know, all the young people were searching for an alternative and the Beatles and the Stones were encouraging us through their music. And uh, so we arrived at the airport and we got off the plane and we went to collect our baggage. And we got all our baggage, but one bag was missing. Prabhupada's suitcase with all his books, meaning what Prabhupada has written in his purports is what he has read in, from the previous acharyas. This is, the, this is the spiritual master. He doesn't make up something, some speculation. Like Prabhupada said, my credit is I haven't subtracted anything or added anything. I'm just speaking on the basis of what my Guru Maharaj has taught me, perfect and complete. From the Adi Guru, Krishna's the Adi Guru, perfect and complete. It comes down through Guru Parampara. So Prabhupada had books by Vishwanath Chagavati Thakur, description of, of, of Tenth Canto Sriman Bhagavatam. He had books by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhakt, Bhaktivinoda Saraswati, Bhaladev Bhujabhushana. He had the books of Jiva Goswami, the Shandharvas. He had Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, all in one bag. Big, heavy <laughs> bag. But it was missing. So he said, someone has to stay behind and wait for my bag. I hid behind a pillar. I should have come forward as a proper disciple, but I heard when we got to the temple, Yamuni Devi was going to cook the feast. How many of you have her cookbook? Yes. That, I mean, that is one of the greatest contributions to the advancement of the Krishna conscious movement that we'll ever know. Nowadays, pizza is more popular than the recipes in that book, but I would hope that that book becomes the standard of cooking one day because that's our tradition. That's our culture, and probably we'll take the world over by our culture. It's so attractive, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we speak. Everything, even our recreation, is just chanting and dancing. So, Prabhupada said, someone has to wait. So I hid behind the pillar. I want to taste Jamuna's cooking. And I heard a rumor that uh, George Harrison and John Lennon would be at the temple. And as a young boy, I grew up on the Beatles songs. All you need is love. <laughs> so... I didn't know I wanted to go to the temple. I was hungry and I was tired, long flight. So then no one volunteered. There were two other boys on the flight. So Papa said, Indra Dumna can stay behind. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. <laughs> in the military, right? I was in the military. Our superiors, we always said, sir, yes, sir. Will you do this? Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, Prabhupada. So that I could hear the kirtan, you know. Tribhuvanath was leading Kirtan. You know, I remember how he played the drum and his big teeth were smiling like this. He was so happy. And then I missed it all and everything went quiet. I started cursing that bag. <laughs> oh, you bag, where are you? Why? Oh. It came two hours later. The feast must be over. Prabhupada's lecture must be over. Maybe George left. George Harris, it came, and I was, you know, it was heavy. I dragged it through the airport to a taxi. I hailed one of those London taxis, 
and I threw it in, and I sat in the sat in the seat, and I said, Seven Bury Place." So the taxi driver said, "Son, uh, did you get off on the wrong side of the bed today? Uh, did you start your day on the left foot?" I said, "Just drive." I was so upset. I fell asleep. Got to Sevenbury Place. Dragged the bag out. Maybe you've been on pilgrimage to Sevenbury Place near the British Museum. Dragged it up the steps, opened the door, came in, and everyone was sitting just full with prashada. Oh, oh. And I could see that the plates, you know, they, you could see the finger marks going to the ghee that they'd taken everything they could practically get. I said, Prabhu, is there any prashadam left? They said, who are you? I said, I'm just, you know, I just came with Prabhupada and I got the bag, the bag, <laughs> the bag. <laughs> and they said, no prashadam left, but it was the best prashadam we ever had in our whole lives. <laughs> So I said, oh, okay, tapasya. <laughs> and I looked at the stairs. You know, in England, you have these <laughs> stairs that go you know, like this. Even now, they go like this. There were I don't know, a few flights of the stairs at Sevenbury Place. So I said, can, can any of you guys help me with the bag? Whoa, <laughs> whoa, I can't. Whoa. I said, come on, just one. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. I said, okay. So then, you know, we have a cup, no? Oh, there's one on the left. Okay, oh yeah, okay, hold that. Better etiquette to drink out of the cup, right? So I dragged that suitcase up, and it was no easy thing. I think Prabhupada's quarters were <coughs> on the third or fourth floor. <laughs> When I got up, I saw this brass sign, uh, the quarters of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. These are my, this is how I think of London. This is how I think of United Kingdom. You know, not like a tourist or someone who lives here, but because of devotional service, I see it in a different way. I'm always eager to come here. So there's the door. So I thought, I'll just, take it in because it's, you know, it's getting late. The proper etiquette would have been, you know, knock. I didn't do that. I turned the, no turned the knob. I turned around backwards and dragged the suitcase in, coming into Prabhupada's room like this. Suddenly Prabhupada's servant, Nanda Kumar, who was a friend of mine, he said, watch out! You're going to bump into Srila Prabhupada! <laughs> and I turned around and Prabhupada was this far away from me. <laughs> like right there. He was smaller. But think about Prabhupada. He, he was small by sta by, by phys phys physically, but by stature he was enormous. And he was effulgent. Prabhupada said one time, the, the, the eyes are the light of the soul. You can see the soul by, by the... And when that... Light goes out of the eyes, it means the person's passed away. But a fully realized soul, everything, that consciousness emanates to every pore of his body. One time Prabhupada was walking across the street near Oxford Street, and when Bobby, you call them Bobbies, you still call them Bobbies, he grabbed Shama Sundar, he said, look, your teacher is glowing like the sun. And when... Uh, George Harrison wrote that song. Here comes the sun, da 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 da. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right, da 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 da. It's been a long, long, lonely winter, da da da. That song was about Prabhupada. George Harrison revealed that to Mukunda Goswami, my my god brother, because Prabhupada was effulgent. I've never seen it in any other person with all. Do respect to many saints. Prabhupada was Shaktavish Avatar, a especially empowered resident of Vrindavan, come to execute the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this world. Effulgent. So I turned around and Prabhupada, 
was in his gumsha. It was a pink and white gumsha. Beautiful. And Prabhupada's body was golden. One time Prabhupada was very ill for a long time. Uh, Nanda Kumar told me this past time. He was ill for a long time and then he got better. And Nanda Kumar came into Prabhupada's room and he said, Prabhupada, you look better. He said, yes. My, um, just see, um, my color has come back. He said, this is my color in the spiritual world, reddish gold. I thought, wow, wow. That Prabhupada's color in the spiritual world, reddish gold? This is a moment of intimacy. Prabhupada revealed something extremely divine, perhaps even confidential. So when I heard that, I ran back to my room and started going through nectar of devotion. Because in nectar devotion, the characteristics of different uh, personalities in Krishna's Vrindavan Leela, there, there's a description there. <coughs> the type of dress they wear, the type of seva, their consciousness, and <coughs> many times what their, what their skin color is like. <coughs> but I stopped because I remember Prabhupada said, we, not, we should not speculate about the identity of the spiritual master in the spiritual world. Rather, we should serve him as he appears before us. And by serving his mission here, we can serve his seva there. This is spiritual mathematics. By serving the spiritual master here, we qualify ourselves eventually to serve him in our liberated form, nitya in the spiritual world. So I close the nectar of devotion. Didn't read. So Prabhupada was fulgent, and I was in, in, in the presence of my spiritual master, it's always on veneration. Although being a spiritual master now, on the instruction of Prabhupada, I, I see that a spiritual master is the master. He's also a psychiatrist. <laughs> He's also a doctor. He's also the best friend. He's a shoulder to cry on. He's so many things in helping his disciples advance on the path of Krishna consciousness. But I was always very dutiful. There's a number of photos of me with Prabhupada that I've collected through the years. I'm always like, like this. So, and Prabhupada, and he, he was smiling. I thought, oh my gosh, I dropped to the ground. And the, the bag went boom, <laughs> that bag. And, and then there was a moment, and all of a sudden, whack, on my back. Prabhupada slapped me here. I thought if I ever get a tattoo, <laughs> I'm not into tattoos, okay? If I ever got a tattoo, I'd do the outline of Prabhupada's palm there. Right? Sometimes I just go like this and feel it. Not everything's okay. And then Prabhupada said something. And then his lotus feet, you know, I could smell the sandalwood on his lotus feet. He was just going to get his massage, actually. So um, the feet left, and I, 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 I thought I'd done something wrong. Maybe I came in the wrong way or whatever. It was such a hard, Prabhupada was in his 70s. That was a hard slap. <laughs> I think it took my breath away. And um, so I waited, and then I got up. And Prabhupada had already gone into the room for his massage. And Nanda Kumar was sitting there with his mouth open like. <laughs> I said, what happened? He said, Prabhupada slapped you on the back in firm appreciation. I went, Phew. He said, I never saw him do that before. And he said something to you. I said, what? He said, so much endeavor. Sorry. <clears throat> he said, so much endeavor in this material world, but when I take you back to Godhead, Everything will be easy and sublime. Yeah. 
So I remember that. You know, we, when we pray to the spiritual master in the, um, when we say the prayers to the spiritual master in the morning at Guru Puja, that um, you know, the, the words from his lotus mouth are like our life and soul. So that, that's my tattoo. That has been etched in stone. Isn't that saying? Etched in stone. So I have a stone-like heart. I'll just be honest with you. I have a stone-like heart. It hasn't yet melted uh, in, in ecstasy. But etched on that heart are those words. So much endeavor in this material world. But when I take you back to Godhead, everything will be easy and sublime. So you know, through the process, we have our challenges. Desires come, desires go. In our seva, you know, especially as a preacher, we meet so much opposition, both sometimes from the government, sometimes from the church. In Poland, we've been attacked by skinheads. We've had to fight, literally, you know, fight. Use my right arm. We had to fight in Sarajevo. We were attacked by the Muslims. Uh, for doing Harinam on the street after the Bosnian War. They were stabbing us with knives. Had to fight. You know, it's not easy to spread a spiritual movement in the material world. It goes against the grain. But it's the Lord's desire, so therefore it will ultimately be successful. So throughout all those trying times, sometimes, you know, I've traveled and bed bugs really like me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. They must have some kind of message they send <laughs> through the whatever. And I've very often been in beds where I get bed, you know, they give two bites, two bites, two bites, and they last 10 days. And I've been in huge crowds. I got COVID twice. I got so many things. Hepatitis in India, you know, just being a traveler. I've been arrested many times. Spent seven days in the, in the jail of Franco in the very beginning in, uh, in Spain. They stripped us down to our underwear and um, they fed us only a gruel, like a little soup, which they'd pour through the thing on the floor. We had to suck it up off the floor. We couldn't only shower every three days. It was so difficult. Eventually, they let us go because one of the people that got arrested us, with us was, father was the chief of justice in the government of Franco, so we got out. But so many trying situations. But whenever that happened, I just thought, Prabhupada's words, so much endeavor in this material world. And I'm not endeavoring for myself, I'm, in, I'm endeavoring for you, Sridhar Prabhupada. Therefore, it's a type of pleasure, actually. It's like drinking hot sugar juice. It's burning your lips, but it's so sweet you can't stop. That's devotional service, under some circumstances. I'd always remember, so much endeavor in this material world. But when I take you back to the spiritual world, everything will be easy and sublime. Then, okay. The goal is there. I just tolerate, share my Guru's mercy. That's my qualification for getting his mercy and go back to the spiritual world. And Prabhupada told Dhananjaya, you know Dhananjaya, he's yours. He's your Dhananjaya. Elderly now, sick, but that's a jara, but we are all experiencing some level or not. Prabhupada told him, when we get back to the spiritual world, we will recognize each other. When I heard that, I went, wow. <laughs> we'll all recognize each other. Isn't that wonderful? He said, but he said, you won't, um, you won't see me like this. He said, I'll be a, like a little boy. <laughs> a young boy, transcendental. He said, we'll have our ISKCON in the spiritual world. If we make our ISKCON our heart and soul here, that will be our gopi gan. Gopi gan means that, like there's different groups of gopis, because those who are part of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, Prabhupada has said that generally the followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're aspiring for Manjari Bhav. It's a deep subject matter. We won't go into it here. I'm not that qualified. But Prabhupada said generally the followers of Lord Chaitanya, they're aspiring for Manjari Bhav. It means the young gopis who served um, Radha and Krishna. That's our mood. Of course, we know in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, there were devotees who had that mood of Rambhakta, like Anupam, one of the brothers, or the, what, the brother of Rupan Sanatan. He was a Rambhakta. 
There were several Ram Bhaktas, there was a Varaha Bhakta. That's fine. But in general, the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he introduced Braj Bhakti, of which the topmost understanding is the love of the gopis for Krishna, that's what we're aspiring for. So I can wait for that. Even it means Janme Janme Prabhu She. If I have to take birth after birth by the desire of my spiritual master, nit problem, we say in Russian, nit problem. No problem. One time my godbrother Adi, Sh Adi Shekhar Prabhu, he was a new bhakta, and Prabhupada had come to Paris. And we were sitting on, on the lawn, no, New Mayapur. We're sitting on the lawn at New Mayapur, a farm community in France. And Adi Shekhar, he asked Prabhupada, Swamiji, when you die, where are you going? What? You don't ask, that's not the kind of, that's not party parshan of sevaya. Inquiring from the spiritual master, getting some instructions and following the, where are you going to go when you die? So Prabhupada said, oh, I plan to go to the hellish planets to continue preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I thought, I'm going with you. Because for me, that's the spiritual. What do I know of the spiritual mass of the world? What do I know of devotional service? What do I know of the six Goswamis? What do I know about Rasik Bhakti? What do I know of Radha and Krishna? I only know my spiritual master. And if I stay with him by serving his mission, surely one day, if he so desires, I'll be there. But if he wants me to stay here, that's Vaikuntha. Like Bhakti Thakur, he was a perfect Grihastra. He had 12 children. He had a house. He had a job as a, working in the government of the British. <laughs> he said, one day I woke up and I saw my house transformed into Vaikuntha. Meaning he was in the material world. But because of his devotional attitude, his spiritual advancement, he wasn't in the material world. He was in the spiritual world. So the spiritual world can be anywhere where we have full faith in Guru and Krishna. One time my dear godbrother, um, um, Tamal Krishna Goswami, he since departed this world. He's with Sridhar Prabhupada. I was just about to start initiating. And I said, Goswami Maharaj, what's the most important quality of a disciple? Because we think like that, don't we? We want to be good students of our guru, even our teachers in school. I always encourage our young people to get a good education, a good foundation whereby you can work and have a career and be peaceful to chant Hare Krishna. So I said, what is the best quality for a disciple? So he replied immediately, he said, the best quality for a disciple is Guru Nishta, to have full faith in the spiritual master. The Vedas say that. To one who has full faith in the spiritual master and Krishna, what? The full import of Vedic knowledge is revealed. You don't have to study the Vedas three times. It takes three lives. All the Vedic literatures, Upanishads, Puranas, Itihashas, it takes three lives. The full purport of all that knowledge is given to you if you're a sincere servant of your spiritual master, Guru Nishta. That's the secret. Nothing less, nothing more. So, yeah, I got that slap on the back. But I always consider my duty is to share that slap with my students. That's my most important service. I have the service. Papa told me, he called before I left for France. I was so nervous. I didn't even know how to say oui, no. <laughs> I couldn't say yes or no in French. I didn't know anything. All I knew there was an Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so Prabhupada called me to his room before I was to leave for France. He said, so, are you ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, you just go and you preach. And, and then you make someone who can translate for you. And then you take my books in English and you get them translated <laughs> into French. And then you publish them, like I had no money. You publish them. And more devotees will come. Then you 
with the help of others, I will send others. You build a temple, then you get a farm community. It's like, I'm 19, you know, like, what? <laughs> I just barely finished high school. I was just surfing the waves of California, you know, when the graduation ceremony took place at high school and the, my diploma came up and, where's Brian? Uh, he's at the beach surfing. <laughs> so they sent it to me in the mail. I had no education. My father used to say, son, you can't do anything. Like, you have no interest in anything. Like, you're not interested in school. You're not interested in sports. You're not interested in social life. What are you going to do in this world? You just don't have any interest. And years later, I laughed at that. I said, Dad, you're right. <laughs> Somehow, I wasn't interested. And I was only interested when I met the real teacher, Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, who gives us the highest education of Krishna consciousness, which means no more birth and death. Srila Prabhupada Ki. So Prabhupada Kasi was nervous, so he said, all right. And he reached back in his drawer and he pulled out one of his dhotis. And he said to me, a gift from a Vaishnava is a very special thing. Like in Upandeshamrita, Goswami describes the six loving exchanges. Except the invitation for Zashad, cook the prashad, give knowledge, hear knowledge, and one of them is to, to exchange gifts. So Prabhupada gave me his, his dhoti. He gave me his dhoti. And that, for me, that was more valuable than all the gold in Fort Knox. In America, we keep our gold in a place called Fort Knox. Even if you gave me all the gold, I wouldn't give that charter. It was saffron. I was a grihastra. I was a married man. I was 11 years married. And later... My wife joined me, from, we joined the movement together, but later she came over to serve with me in France. And um, I used to wear that chatter, that saffron chatter everywhere. Saffron's for the renunciates. This saffron color, this, this represents fire. The renunciates, they wear this color because they're, they're burning up their material desires and the fire of service to Guru and Krishna. So I was a grihastra, attached. My wife was a very nice devotee, very beautiful. I used to wear that charter. And the sannyasis would come through Paris. Guru Kripa, Yashoda Nandana, Achyut Nanda. You're a Grihastra. What do you wear a saffron for? Take that off. I said, you just try to take it off me. <laughs> You'll see my right hand punch. <laughs> One time I was from so much Harinam, Again, we didn't have, you know, uh, amplification on how I know. And for nine years, I sang at the top of my voice, you know, eight or nine hours a day in Paris and Madrid and Rome and everywhere. And um, singing so much. And I developed this huge nodule on my vocal cords. And my voice was like that. And I went to the hospital. The doctor said, are you an opera star? He said, I've never seen a nodule so big. You must really sing. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I had, I had to have an operation. So they put me under, and they were going to cut the nodule off. Somehow the anesthetist, the person who gives the, he didn't give enough. I woke up in the middle of the operation. You know, you know that it really makes you dazed and it's easy. So I saw this guy with a mask on with a knife. He was a doctor, you know, he's gonna but I just saw the guy with a with a knife and a mask, so I went boom <laughs> My hand was tied there, that went, they had the, but it then it was loose. Boom and the blood went everywhere in the doctor's nose. And then <laughs> so, um, when I woke up three hours later, <laughs> the doctor was coming in the room, and um, he had this like, you know, this, what do you call it, like a, the bandages, not bandages, but a stick here, like a, like a it's support, it's support it's 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 and he had his nose taped like that, and, he was coming up, what, what happened? The nurse was saying, you rascal boy, you, you hit the, 
you hit the doctor in the face and broke his nose in four places. And I said, what? I can't remember. And the doctor said, no, no, it's okay. Because he was under the influence of the, of, the tox, of the intoxication of the drug, so he didn't know what he was doing. It's okay. Don't criticize him. So from that I learned something that, like sometimes on Sangatan, people come and they're aggressive. When we first went to France, we'd go through the markets, and the butchers would throw meat on our face. They, they knew we weren't meteors. They'd take cow flesh, and they'd put it in our face, they put it in our face, trying to make us eat it. Those were the days they throw food at us, you know. So, but I always remember that they are under the influence of Maya, of illusion. They don't know who they are. They don't know what is pious or impious activity. They're acting under the influence of the material energy, just like I was act acting under the influence of the drug. So I have to forgive them. A very valuable lesson. Through all my years on the streets, when everybody would approach or say something or spit on me, that's okay. That's all right. I have to tolerate because they're doing it. They wouldn't do it if they were liberated souls. So please, sir, I'm sorry for being here, but could you please buy this book? <laughs> like, what? And he says, I, how much is it? <laughs> like that. So, yeah, Prabhupada gave me the charter. And I wore it till it became like tattered. I looked like a beggar. I had to stop wearing it. And I gave it to Dina Tarani and Yamuna Devi for, they were making a, muse, a, pra, a museum, a Prabhupada museum. I gave like that. And then Prabhupada said to me, because you could see I was a little nervous going to France, he said, I'll give you an instruction. You preach boldly and you have faith in the holy names. Boom! Prabhupada said, hearing the Maha Mantra or hearing instructions from the spiritual master has a special effect. Special effect. That's why I like to listen to Prabhupada Bhajans. We have many Kirtan heirs, you know, Badahari, my best friend, Madhava, Bibi Govinda Maharaj. But, but hearing from Prabhupada is something very special. So I like to hear the Prabhupada Bhajans. So I gave that instruction, and that was my. That's been my mission. I was a young man, and that was my instruction. Based on that instruction, I left householder life with the approval of my former wife. I left, and yeah, I, I tried my best um, not to look back and think I left anything behind, not to envy the position of the materialist descent enjoyers, and it's been a wonderful life. We have to be in this world, but not of this world. That's uh, Jesus' instruction. To be in this world and not of this world. Like a lotus flower, it's always growing a little bit above the lake. The stem goes into the mud, that's where it gets its nourishment in the mud, at the bottom of the lake. But the lotus flower is to be a little bit, it's always a little bit above. So I think like that. I want to be like the lotus flower here, but my heart's there. Like a sailor. A sailor's on the ocean, let us say in the old days, on a wooden ship. And he's a good sailor. He varnishes the deck, he polishes the brass, he fixes the sails, he has a sectant, and he's always very careful to know exactly where he is on the ocean as it's going forward, like that. Very good sailor, but he never thinks he's a creature of the water. Isn't it? My father was a sailor. He was in the Navy, he had boats when he was younger, and we used to go out on the boat. And he said, son, before I take you out on this boat, you become an expert swimmer. So when I was a hot in high school, I didn't like to swim, but he put me on the swim, swim team. And we practiced, you know, after school, five hours every day through my freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And I became, you know, a good swimmer, actually. Especially the backstroke, 200 meter backstroke. I was a champion in uh, California. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like that. Good sailor, but never think you're a creature of, he never, the sailor never thought he was a creature of the water. And as he's being very responsible, going through the waves, what was he thinking? Land. Land ho! He called out like that when he saw the land. He was going through life, but his, but his consciousness was always on the goal. 
So we have to be responsible. Prabhupada told us we should be ladies and gentlemen. We should be responsible. We should have an education. Go through high school, secondary. Go to university. Get your master's if you require. Do that. Have a career. Find a nice spouse. Live together. Make money. Have children. Pay your bills. Pay your taxes. Worry about the environment for your children and great great grandchildren. That's okay. But, Panamukatim, what's the ultimate goal? Get out of here. And how do I do that? I have to find time to chant 16 rounds every day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Previously, yoga, gyan, tiyagi, bhairagi, all those paths took a long time, many lifetimes to become self-realized and move to the next stage of self-realization, culminating in bhakti. Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Sarvatma Sadhurlava. Krishna says, after many births and deaths, one becomes my surrendered devotee. But now, Bhakti Shadana Saraswati Thakur, he said at one of his initiation ceremonies, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to Godhead in one lifetime. That's against the laws of nature. That's called a miracle. How is it accomplished? By the mercy of Guru and Gauranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He made it so simple. We have to find time to chant. We find time to eat. We're so busy, family life, my business, my country. You know, we find time to eat three times a day. Each about one hour. <coughs> so that's three hours. We can't find time to chant 60 rounds. We have to find time to chant 60 rounds. In fact, one of my god sisters, she, um, in her initiation ceremony, Prabhupada asked her the four rules and regulations. Well, she gave the, the um, rules and then she said, Prabhupada, I promise to chant a minimum of 16 rounds every day. How many of you have made that vow to your guru? I promise a minimum of 16 rounds every day. You know what Prabhupada did? He leaned over and he said, why a minimum? He's like, what? <laughs> minimum means you get the minimum benefit. Maximum means you get the maximum benefit. Maximum is 64. Of course, it's not possible for, for most people in this age, even 32. But 16 quality rounds that we can do. We say in French, ça suffit. Well, that's all that's required. So if that's all required to get freed from uh, samsara, hello? Like, what is samsara? Birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, COVID, HIV, car accident, divorce, <laughs> old age. That's what it means. Who wants that? Everyone has their story. Just chant. Of course, we all have our pace. Not that we can immediately embrace 16. But if we don't come to that point, then where's our intelligence? <clears throat> and if we don't have intelligence, we should take shelter of those who have intelligence and follow their guidance. Senior devotees, spiritual masters, adiksha, shiksha gurus, Srila Prabhupada. And when you do that, you'll find it's not so difficult. In fact, you look forward to it. Like, how in the world I wasn't chanting 16 rounds before? I'm like, wow. And you'll know you're making advancement. So we're all blessed. I have more Prabhupada stories. I'll share them with, the, with you when I come next time. Lots of them. But this is hors d'oeuvre. Mm hors -hmm. means that before the main meal, you get some peanuts and some um, apple uh, juice, and then your um, hunger increases. So we'll leave you with a cliffhanger. You, uh, this is hors d'oeuvre. There's so much beautiful philosophy awaiting you as devotees. There's so many beautiful pastimes that are revealed to us by our previous acharyas, the Goswamis, etc. There's so many beautiful moments in your life, special kirtans, <coughs> special feasts. We had beautiful pizza today. Yeah, we had pizza today. Yeah. Um, <coughs> 
You have Vrindavan? You can fly there, you don't have to take a wooden boat like the sailor. You can fly there in a few hours, you have Mayapur, you have uh, Shirangam, Tirupati, uh, Vishnupati, you have so, it's just so much. One time Prabhupada's father said to him, Abhai, you know, Krishna has many thousands of arms and thousands of hands. If he just wants to give you some mercy, how much your two little hands can hold? We have more mercy than we can imagine. Let us take full advantage, full, full advantage of it. And let's get back home. Krishna says one who gets back home, gets back to the spiritual world, he never takes birth again. That's your goal. Be responsible, but remember the Param Gutim. Goloka Vrindavan. Krishna's personal abode, where he, you can enjoy forever pers a very personal relationship with Krishna. Shantushti which will satisfy your heart forever. Nothing in this world can compare. And how do we get appreciation of that? How do we get a taste for that? Just like Prabhupada said, if you take a drop of the ocean, you taste it, you know what the whole ocean is like. So how do we get a taste of perfection, of liberation, of bhakti, of devotion, of love, divine love, Radha and Krishna, through chanting Hare Krishna? Voila. Say too. That's all. You get that. It's all revealed to you. Because you're calling out to Krishna for mercy. My dear Lord, my dear energy of the Lord, Shimati Radharani, please give me some service. The one time they asked Prabhupada, what's the meaning of the mantra? So we're getting, we were expecting we hear the same thing. Prabhupada said on that occasion, what does this Maha Mantra mean? It means, my friend, my friend, my friend. A friend in need is a friend indeed, and the best friend is Krishna, who's called uh, Mukunda, the deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. So when we chant, we should pronounce the whole 32 syllables. We should chant from the heart, with some sincerity, with some meaning. Krishna will hear. Just like a baby in the crib. There's some a little uncomfortable to wet its pants. So, nah. But if a cobra, snake, sarp comes into the crib, <laughs> mommy comes running. So if you chant from the heart, Krishna comes running. You have to run to Krishna, he'll run to you. Prabhupada said to us, You're all, you are all fallen, sinful boys and girls, hippies, dirty, and ignorant, addicted to drugs and sex and rock and roll. But when you heard the Maha Mantra, you all came running. One of my favorite quotes. And it's true. When we heard the Maha Mantra, whatever we were, we came running. So let's keep running. Running means dancing. <laughs> let's keep dancing. Well, a little kirtan. I took too much of your time, but um, I think it was all worthwhile. Krishna Kata. Shravanam Kirtanam brings. Krishna Smarana, remembrance of the Lord. So I have a little kirtan. Do you, here in Crawley, do you, do you like crawl? <laughs> Sorry, or do you run? I think they should call it running, not crawling. <laughs> Let's change the name of this town, okay? <laughs> running to Krishna. Okay.
seeing those Gorni Taididis, he became very emotional. And he's saying that, you know, here we are so far from home. <laughs> All the people in Gainesville were like, well, we're here in the center of the town. I said, we're so far from home, meaning our real home, either Mayapur or Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri, as, as you desire. Um, we're so far from home, but nevertheless, Gorni Tai have come here. He said like that. So far from home. You can just see Prabhupada's heartbeat. One time Prabhupada was walking on, on a beach um, in, in San Francisco. I used to go to that beach. We would surf the water there. It was very cold. Stinson Beach it was called. And uh, Prabhupada was walking and the, the, the waves were breaking. You know how, how they do on the beach? Kabush! 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 So Prabhupada, he said to the disciples, what is that noise? What is that noise? So, I think it was one of the scientists, you know, like Subhadamadar Goswami or something, he said, oh Prabhupada, that's the sound of the waves crashing on the beach. So Prabhupada said, no, that's the sound of the gopis' heartbeats when they're feeling separation from Krishna. Wow. So, Krishna everywhere, and even when he was far from home, um, from either Mayapur, Vrindavan, he also considered Bombay very dear. That was his um, workplace, he said, established the Jew temple there. Very nice book has been written by my Gagwadha Giriyar Swami Maharaj about the development of that temple. Prabhupada actually saw Krishna everywhere. 
he saw the desire of the Lord everywhere to spread the Sankirtan movement. So he never felt. It's interesting that different mellows of devotional service sometimes are clashing like that. He <laughs> felt very far away from home, Mayapur, Vindal. At the same time, he felt at home, serving the order of Lechitanya Mahaprabhu. So I've uh, been very happy to come to this outpost. This is an outpost, like in the Wild West in America. You know, we had the outpost way out. Cavalry was out there protecting everyone from the Indians. The outpost. Sorry to say the Crawley is just an outpost. <laughs> all that it is, it's an outpost. But um, as I was saying earlier, we can change this outpost into Vaikuntha. Kunta means um, a place of anxiety, Kunta. And Vaikuntha in Sanskrit, if you put the prefix Vai, it changes the meaning. It's the opposite, it's the spiritual world. So this creepy, crawly little place <laughs> can be a very beautiful uh, transcendental abode if all of you share your good fortune with everyone. Um, Prabhupada told us one time in Paris, Krishna consciousness is blissful when it's expanding. This is a movement, it's moving forward, and it's meant to bring into it hundreds and millions and billions of people. Bhakti Vinotakur said that his heart would only be satisfied with the 14 worlds were chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 uh, many people together calling upon the Lord. Then you'll hear. We chant Japa for our purification, but these type of kirtans, Cheto Dharapana Marjana, tons of lust and anger and grief, it goes away. It's recommended, this process, loud chanting all together, just like if there's some problem in the city. So one person who goes to the city hall, they're having a meeting, the administration, He's outside screaming at the window, hey you guys, I don't like this law, hey, hello. They just shut the window and no one can hear him. But if many people come together to the, the city hall where there's a meeting, and they all cry, whoa, we're not, we're not. okay, what, what's the problem? Come on in, we'll discuss. So the same way, we're calling for mercy, calling for mercy, but when we come together like this, Krishna listens. Because in every congregation, by the Lord's arrangement, there are advanced devotees, there are intermediate devotees, and there are beginners. So when you're chanting, you're hearing the kirtan of senior devotees, you're hearing the kirtan of your friends. Blood is thicker than water. This is our friendship, this is our family, our congregation, so you're enjoying the kirtan, chanting together, and there's the newcomers. And you're chanting for them so they get to taste the Namruji for the So this is the process of so you should have kirtan like this as often as possible. And if you invite me, invite me back, I'll come back again. Why not? Yeah. 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 Prabhupada's story is my favorite class. Is discussing Shikapapa. So thank you um, so, so much. Um, yeah. I'll see you around. I'm, I'm here for two more weeks. You're there and everywhere. See you there and um, look forward to coming back to Crawley, this uh, beautiful town here. Beautiful town. The sun was out today. I, I don't think I've ever seen you know, <laughs> London in the area of the sunshine. It was like, whoa, what happens? So thank you and uh, we'll give out some cookies and then we'll go into the next place. Is that in the same video Swami Maharaj? Yeah.